James B. Madonna, and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay. Happy Festivus for the rest of us. A merry winter solstice Yule. We're no fool. And Hail Krampus. This is our holiday special show of progressive discussions. Seven lucky bells for the holiday special show. All right, and, and, and old-fashioned jingle bells. Remember when I used to do the bosun's whistle? And <laughs> the cats would freak out. <laughs> the levity bells are back, brother. All right, now, what can I say? We all know that Jesus wasn't really born in December. We all know that our the capitalist, the, re the greedy, sleazy, lying retail capitalist system with our, uh, our wonderful oligarch uh, fascist government. You, you know they don't really give a rat's ass about uh, when Jesus was born or the manger or any of the three wise men. Uh, they do it so retail can uh, uh, get you to part with your money hook or by crook any way they can uh, and this includes lying mm -hmm. infomercials so on and so forth um, so I mean I, I, I presented my festivist airing of grievances last night I put it on Facebook it's there it's very <coughs> explicit I name names I'm sorry that I had to go that route but I have to honor Festivus properly by the airing of grievances. Now, uh, I also want to announce that today was the birth of a new page, a new Facebook page called uh, the International Brotherhood of uh, Festivus and Krampus. Oh and it will be the new home of Chisler's Hall of Shame because it is in protest mm. of um, the greedy retail companies using all of these um, fake phony fraud uh, pagan tradition holidays as a as a way to exploit the consumer and to extract all of your money so out of protest uh, today is the birth of that and um, I can't think of a better page to uh, become the bastion of Chisler's Hall of Shame because they needed a good home that was applicable to the cause. Okay, uh, got the Nutcrackers are here <coughs> visiting. They're friends of the Bernie Bird. Bernie Bird sends his regards. And um, that's pretty much it, man. I mean, um, um, oh, the practical joke that a parent could play on a very spoiled and coddled uh, a brat, little monster that takes tantrums when he doesn't he or she he or she doesn't get their way, is to what you do is you gift wrap a large box. They open up the big box, and within the box is another box, a little smaller. Then they open up that box. And there's another box, and they open up that box, and there's another box, and it goes down to a little tiny box, and then when they finally open that up, there's nothing in there, and the and the parent says, "Oh, that's your gift, a breath of fresh air." <laughs> what, do you, what do you think of that, Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman? Isn't that the funniest practical joke you've ever heard? I think it's a lot of waste of paper and boxes. Cardboard. I would just give them a lump of coal in their stocking. Oh, what about a dirty stocking? A Can't dirty, fight. smelly stocking in the stocking. 
In other words, you wear your socks for a couple of weeks. They're all sticky and sweaty. That joke has already been made by Jeff Dunham on his show with... Uh, oh, he did that? Yeah, he did. just did it about a half an hour Every ago. time I think I originated a funny idea, with some the, other motherfucker invented with it. With the purple already. puppet. What's the, what's the name of the purple puppet? I know he had a show. He had a series. What, no, it, this is from... Now, the, Jeff Dunham is, uh, is Nevada the, the or owner of Madam, right? Or Madame? Yeah, yeah. no. Well, that was another guy. That's another. This guy has uh, uh, Ahmed. Yes, I know who you're talking about now. Yeah. The puppeteer Jeff Dunham. Yeah. Puppeteers. Uh, you know, puppeteers... Yeah, are, puppeteers are cool because they are more creative than your typical ventriloquist because they can have many, many puppets with different voices and different characters and different personalities. Well, yeah, puppeteering you know I mean? has been around for a long time. Yeah, uh, 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 going back, I guess, to the Middle Ages with the marionettes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. the Nutcrackers, their mouth moves. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? That one looks like Richard. How you doing? You know, from the Planters commercial. Uh, you remember better than me. Hey, no, how planters, you doing? The Mr. Peanut. All you bastards, all you suckers out there that's pissed away all your money, buying gifts that you can't afford, <laughs> only for people to complain. And, uh -huh. Oh, by the way, make sure you stick the receipt in the box so they can return their frigging gift instead of you having to return it. Hey. Companies, hey, Nutcracker, that's very that's very clever. The companies are getting to not want to return, have returns anymore. Isn't that another scam? It's, yeah. oh, wait a minute. Hey. Buy it and like it. Dr. Bill, that sounds like an anti-consumer retail scam to me. And another thing, another scam is the gift card, because guess what? If you read the fine print, you'll notice that the gift card has an expiration date. How can a gift card expire, you say? You ask? Well, I don't know because, you know, beats the shit out of me, man. I, I, I figure if you buy a gift card, it should be worth the money you paid for it because the, it's a gift card. It's mm -hmm. a gift. So if you're gifted... If and you paid gift the money to up front to the company to get the gift card. So if you forget the gift card in your draw and you don't liquidate it, you don't use it, guess what? The company just stole the money That's it. that the giver spent on the gift card. That, that's it. Yeah. That's nutcracker, the scam. Nutcracker, you're, you're absolutely... King Nutcracker. King. That's the you're king. absolutely right. I'm always fucking right. What are you talking about? All right. I got to put you down. Because I got to do little... Paula Dickey. Right? <coughs> okay. Now if he starts if he starts talking now, I'm I'm headed out the door uh -huh. with my tail between my legs. <laughs> okay. Um I guess God willing, uh next week will be our end of two thousand sixteen show. You know. Yeah, happy so New Year, if you want to call it a Happy New Year. New Year's Eve, next Saturday. Huh? New Year's Eve. New Year's next Eve, Saturday. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 2017. Oh, that's a peachy keen year. Unbelievable. Listen. And then there'll be, nine, well, 20 days until the Trump takes over. Yeah, all the celebrities. He's already got us in an army. All the... Bullshit. All the celebrities that refused to perform at his inauguration. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny if Alec Baldwin did that fantastic Donald Trump imitation at the inauguration and, and Trump, you know, Trump doesn't doesn't have a sense of humor when people like uh, when uh, it's tease him. All. <laughs> when people tease him. Yeah. Oh no. And Alec Baldwin, let me tell you something, brother. You do a fantastic Donald Trump. I don't know if you've seen the... Right. He does a great Donald Trump. I've seen the SNLs. Yeah, and the uh, the Vladimir Putin. Man, it looks so much like him. He comes on with, the, with no shirt on. Yeah. 
<laughs> Unbelievable. But he does the goldfish face perfectly and the voice. He's got everything down pat. The facial expressions. That's why Trump don't like it. Oh yeah, Trump wanted to demand an apology. Yeah. How the hell is Alec Baldwin going to pull this one off? Well, let's put it this way. He'll pull it off. It'll get a lot of media attention. And he won't be invited back again, but at least it'll be out there. It'll probably go viral, you know, if he does. Why, he is invited? Uh, that's what I heard. I could be wrong. I don't... Mm, I don't know. I, didn't I don't know. Anything. But Donald Trump <laughs> will provide a cornucopia of material for comedians mm -hmm. in, in the next four years to come that if you're a comedian... You, you will be very grateful for Donald Trump's presidency. Now, if you're the little, a little guy, like a poor person or a middle-class person, your doom is sealed. Oh, yeah. You got it, man. You voted for it. You voted for the uh, fascist, oligarch, right-wing politicians. You re-elected Turtlehead Mitch McConnell, Kentucky. You re-elected Paul Ryan, Wisconsin. You re-elected all these incumbents. These d demonic incumbents, you got it. You asked for it, American people. I can call you the, the stupidest imbeciles who were, were ever conceived in a womb. Or I could talk about how the biased corporate controlled media never gave <clears throat> uh, Jill Stein an even chance. You know, because the only reason why Bernie got any coverage is because of the amount of people sh that showed up his rallies at his rallies compared to Hillary Clinton so they, they had to cover Bernie Sanders otherwise they would never mention his name but they never mentioned Jill Stein's name therefore if Bernie Sanders would have won the primary if, if life was fair the, he would have won the election oh he was leading Trump. Trump by double digits in the polls that is correct yes yes he was so he was cheated so and then we would have got a real change. Well, I mean, let's take. Um, I'll show you how capitalism works as far as rigging. Rigging, because uh, Colombia, South America, they had uh, a president who was buddy buddy with G. W. Bush. He was a hundred percent pure capitalism. The poor people got screwed and suffered royally there there really is no middle class per se and um, the rich well they just got a lot of freebies and he went and he ran against uh, a democratic socialist and uh, the crook won by a landslide in every every part of the country now how does a crook where where the people if you get sick and you don't have money or health insurance you die outside of the hospital on the on the sidewalk or street hmm. how does that person win by a landslide hey sounds familiar doesn't Assad it Assad did in uh, Syria also yeah. so you know it's like uh rigging is not um anything new no it's old hat it's been around for a while and uh, in this country, of course, you have gerrymandering and voter suppression, and uh, you have the media. Not it's not a liberal media, but the media is on your side if you are a corporatist. Now, the people never got to know Jill Stein. Whether or not the incorrigible uh, redneck racist teabagger morons would have voted for Jill Stein if she was at the um, uh, uh, debates I don't know maybe maybe the people that are spellbound would have continued to vote for the people for those that they made up their mind to vote the gays and lesbians would now might have continued to back Hillary anyway they wouldn't have had to the rednecks would have went with Trump because they're not going to go with a Stein so I don't know but the Bernie Kratz you see this is the thing Bernie Sanders capitulated concerning this grassroots revolution because he could have continued with democratic socialism. Sixty percent of 
Democrats did not vote. They stayed home. So all the... So Trump didn't need, you know, well, the, more, than, uh, more than his... Uh, his regular well, we, we all know that, that all the nuts make it their yeah. business to vote. They yeah. show up. The Democrats are made up of a lot of these uh, these brilliant people that post these uh, uh, brilliant uh, <clears throat> monologues on social media, but if they're not happy, they stay home and they don't vote. Mm -hmm. Now, a vote not cast is a vote for a Republican. That's correct. Automatically. That's correct. Because the the re the the right wing racist, teabagger, evangelical nuts, the zealots, they automatically show They're up at the there. polls yep. and yep. vote. Yep. Because yep. they got this fucking thirty five percent of the, yeah yeah. yeah. They got there. this stupid obsession with the conception in the womb, uh, mm. the the foetalized egg. Uh, they think it's a baby. You saw that that video by Mr. Science saying that a fertilized egg is not a baby and explaining why if you need explanation. It's like it's no more a baby than an acorn is an oak tree. It is a potential human uh, life. Just like a, a an acorn is a potential oak tree. <clears throat> um and that's that. I mean uh I don't know. I don't know where to post the blame. But it's, uh, there's a lot of what ifs. A lot of what ifs. If Jill Stein went, was in the debates, I know damn well if Bernie Sanders were to would have, um, um, as he quit the Democratic Party after he uh, after the convention, if he would have had a rally and said to his revolution, okay, obviously. We got screwed. The DNC screwed us. So we are going to, uh, I'm going to continue to run as an independent or I'm going to start a new progressive party or I'm going to take the Green Party's offer. I'm going to take them up on their offer. Three three things could happen. Or a writing. Right. Can't or he could have encouraged everyone, yeah. uh, look, I'm, I'm, I'm in it, but I'm in it, I'm in it as a write-in. Okay, people, so all the legions that showed up at his rally mm -hmm. would have wrote him in. Now, but he didn't, he didn't do that. No. He pulled the same routine that all the um, establishment, I don't know whether you want to call them moderates or blue dogs, all the establishment Democrats endorsed Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. Bernie Sanders joined that. Why he joined that, I'm sure, look, Bernie Sanders is not stupid by any stretch of the imagination. For some reason, he didn't want to go the route of a new progressive, a third progressive party. He didn't want to go the route as Bernie Sanders, the write-in candidate. He didn't want to go the route of Bernie Sanders, Jill Stein ticket. For some reason, he did not go that route. Because it's not, you don't have to be an intellectual or a genius to know that that the the options were there so getting back to the media yes the media um, tells us many lies and uh, yeah you know now I mean there are there are conspiracy theories with some evidence pointing to the guilty party but not enough evidence yet so they're pending conspiracy theory like for instance pizzagate it's pending pizzagate is gone finished over with it was a lie that's horseshit the pizza place is still there they're full of poopy he come in with a guy and shoots a guy in the pizza place pizza place is still there, there no 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 i'm talking no about, I'm talking about this whole pedophilia this whole satanic uh uh a uh, 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 secret society, a uh, uh, human trafficking thing internationally going on, and all the uh, the uh, the perverted, very rich old geezers, they want the young chocha, and they and they go to a special resort and they pay for it, and many of them are famous, yeah, rich, that's... famous rich old geezers. Yes, I believe that is true. I believe that 
the fascist oligarch has been uh, dishing out orders to American government and media for a long time now. People are hoodwinked. People are fooled. I believe, I believe, I believe there is an evil force that controls everything. You don't want to believe it because maybe it, it's too blood curdling for you. Ooh, it frightens me. Ooh. If you believe the Bible, <laughs> if you believe the Bible, yeah, as stated, yeah. Of course, there's an evil force involved. It's his world. Well, there's shenanigans going on. Yeah, but these shenanigans that you Pizzagate that you're talking about had nothing to do with How Hillary. Are you wearing the scarf? Okay. I hope you like. You it. see that now? You didn't see that before? I hope you liked what you got. I mean, you like. You the had hat? to put your glasses on. Yeah. Did you like the hat? No, I saw the scarf. I saw the plaid. I just wanted to verify it. Oh. I'm saying, you like the hats? They're thick. Trouble is, uh, you know, when the hell am I going to go out? No, no. You, you, it's drafty. I ain't got to sleep in them. It's drafty back there. Yeah, well, no, I mean, not now. No, that's the warmest place in the house. No, I mean, not now. I mean, it's out here that's cold. Yeah. No, I mean, not now. I mean, when, yeah. when, when we get another cold spot. Hey, right now we have unseasonably, I think it's pushing 50 degrees. Not today, but and it's yeah. raining too. It's going to be in the 40s for at least six days. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, we had freezing. You know, they always call it when it's when it's a wintry mix. When it's freezing cold with wind, they call it blustery. The yeah. breezy, no, blustery. When it's um, it's uh, a summertime and you get a lot of breeze, it's just summer breeze makes me feel fine. I got jasmine on my mind, yeah. you know. But you know what I mean. Like it, it, they're different words. Like if it's cold and humid, it's damp. If it's cold and if it's damp, if it's if it's in the summer, it's muggy. It's called muggy. When you have high humidity with warm warm air, it's muggy. Now, I don't know. Anyway, I digress. But getting back to you, sure things, did. you know, the media is going to hold back on a lot of stuff that's going on and they do like the Aleppo situation I, I hear I hear the, the 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 true the truth of Aleppo and Syria is uh, very much tampered with when it when it reaches the US media well you do know that somebody is knocking the place to hell won't you yeah, and I know Putin is and really, really, he's really pissed off at ISIS now. Oh, really? ISIS has about 30,000 people in it. And yeah. now you got the Kurds, you got the Iraqis, you got uh, 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 Russia, suppose. Oh, the Kurds, no, the, Kurds are, the Kurds don't like the, uh, don't like ISIS. I'm just saying, they fighting 30,000, why ain't they all dead by now? Why, That's my point. Why aren't now they? Trumpy wants to come around and use nuclear weapons. Well, rec yes. recently ISIS burned uh, two uh, uh, Turkish uh, soldiers alive. <laughs> how did they get caught? They've been chopping off Christians' heads for a long time. But how do they? How do they? How do they capture people from a an organized, well-trained army? With their government backing them, how does a band of terrorists? Wait a minute! Wait a minute! You're confusing me. Like whose like, government? Like the soldiers that fight ISIS are representing nations. They're they're part the of Iraq. An organized the Turks, I think too. The Kurds, Iraqis, the Turks, supposedly. Syrian uh, Assad's men, right? Assad likes ISIS. No, he ISIS, doesn't like ISIS that. is in Syria. I think it's Ram, 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 or whatever. Yeah, I don't know how. I don't know how they. The point is, they capture uh, uh, organized soldiers from an organized army. I don't know how they capture. Only thirty thousand of them. You got to capture them to chop their head off or or burn them alive, right? I mean, I don't know how they they like you said before. Why aren't they wiped out by now? And not only that, have you noticed? That you don't hear much more about Mosul anymore. No. 
Did they capture the freaking city yet? Or what? Did they kick ISIS out? Now, or what? Now, Felucia, ISIS kept on recapturing Felucia after losing Felucia. They keep on going back in. In other words, they're, they're like, it's like a gnat that you can't swat. You know, they keep on buzzing around and you just, and, well, and you think you point. got them and you don't. I mean, they're spread out, for Christ's sake. 30,000 of them should be wiped out by now. Yeah, and, and but the Taliban are still going. And, another, and, and one was uh, recorded saying, um, ISIS member, um, if you celebrate uh, uh, if you celebrate Christmas, the Quran says you should be put to death. The Quran doesn't say that. I mean, the, the, these are like these are like the the, the right wing fundamentalist evangelical Christians that rewrite the Bible, right? Yes, Pretty much. Yes. Yes. And uh, decide they want to go blow up uh, Planned Parenthood or something like that. Yeah. It, it it's right wing extremism. Yeah. Get that through your head. Don't use the word radical because too many people in politics are using the word radical. That's correct. And radical means to go to the root of things. It's As a, Wilhelm Reich said it's, many moons it's, ago. It's a positive word. That's correct. Socialism is a positive word. Um, um, liberal, liberal is a positive word. These are positive words. I mean, if you look them up and in the Merriam-Webster's uh, dictionary, you'll see they, po they have positive definitions. You know, so anyway, let us sink, well, I don't know, what time is it? Let us, all right, we're all right. Let us sink our teeth into these readings. Sink them, baby. Yeah. Da -da 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 Amid back and forth about nuclear weapons capability, it was revealed on Friday that President-elect Donald Trump and Russian leader Vladimir Putin exchanged end-of-the-year greetings and pledged to improve U.S.-Russia relations. Yeah, but they both want to beef up the arms race. Nothing like a good friend uh, that you you know you remind uh, you know we could just, we could annihilate you many times over. I mean that's a that's a pal. A very nice letter from Vladimir Putin. His slots are so correct. Trump said. Trump's office released the letter, dated December the fifteenth, in which Putin said he hopes to work with the new U.S. president in a constructive and pragmatic manner in order to restore the framework of bilateral cooperation in different areas. I hope both sides are able to live up to these thoughts and we do not have to travel an alternate path, Trump said. U.S.-Russia relations will certainly be a major feature of the Trump presidency. The intelligence community has accused Putin's government of hacking emails from Democratic Party officials in an effort to help Trump win the election. In 2014, Russia annexed the territory of Crimea from Ukraine which triggered several rounds of economic sanctions against Russia by the United States and the European Union. Lawmakers in both parties are pushing an investigation into Russian involvement in the election. Putin has denied the allegations. Trump who made better relations with Russia a theme of his campaign, has questioned whether the Russians were involved in the hacking scheme. Will the exchange with Putin on a day in which he criticized how conflict of interest laws affect his son? He also golfed with Tiger Woods. 
blew off reports that celebrities are shunning his inauguration. Well, that, that's not surprising. And reaffirmed his Thursday tweet about strengthening and expanding the U.S. nuclear ability. I think Rosie O'Donnell should be invited to Saturday, Saturday Night Live and with Alec Ball with Donald Trump. Yeah. Wouldn't that, that would be funny as hell. Trump told MSNBC he is willing to engage in an arms race with other countries if necessary. Though his aide said he is more interested in modernizing existing nuclear weapon systems. Let it be an arms race, because we will outmatch them at every pass and outlast them all. Yeah, sure. But my question is, what good are nuclear weapons against ISIS? It's what? Against ISIS or any other enemy person. No, but they blend in with the civilian population. My point entirely, what good are they? It's like, um, that's like taking a needle and putting, throwing a, a, a handful of needles in a haystack in different areas. Now you got the haystack of innocent civilians, women and children and whatever, and ISIS blend, blended in. But you also have the land uninhabitable for long time you don't want um you don't want um yeah and you get all the refugees ah you get all the refugees yeah Refu cool. refugees um you know uh you, you're throwing the baby out with the bath there you go there as you the go. late great carlton fredericks said often you're throwing the baby out with the bathwater, and uh, um, it's almost like Donald Trump is is sexually stimulated when he when he mentions nukes. Well, the problem is he doesn't know anything about them. You know, when when uh, well, he's Reagan, not on the receiving end of them. That's what when it. Reagan was in office, he said that once you launch a particular missile or whatever, you could recall it. Yeah. Can't happen. Recall? He's the one that always says, I can't recall. Yeah. Well, I don't recall. Well, you can recall that. Okay. So the point is that he didn't know about this stuff and neither does Trump. Who's the guy that invented it? Oppenheimer? Who? The atomic bomb? Uh, it was a project by a bunch of people. A bunch. Yeah. Well, one one of them, I, I, I listened to the old speech after the test was uh, uh, done in, in New Mexico. Yeah. And the uh, one of the prominent scientists... I think it was Nevada. ...felt like... The end of the world. They weren't. He wasn't... He wasn't thrilled. At, at watching it, he, he, he felt I, ha I, we have created uh, uh, something about the, the the potential annihilation of mankind, yes, or something like that. Yes, we have created something that is not positive. It's not something he wasn't proud of. It. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Now, what, now we can do this. We can annihilate all flesh. As the Bible says, maybe maybe this is why Matthew Jap 24. Maybe this is why the Japanese uh, are dumping all that nuclear waste from Fukushima into the Pacific Ocean. Maybe it's it's revenge for uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. You don't know. I mean, why why would they do it? Maybe why they would they want to poison the Pacific? Maybe they just don't care. But they're in the Pacific. So maybe they, they don't they, care. They, the, 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 they their coastline is the Pacific, but they don't care. Because maybe they understand that we are all doomed. Oh, it's, is that like the Chinese having having uh, horrible air pollution in uh -huh. certain major cities? 
but they're making money hand over ah. fist. But the, but the people have to wear uh, ox, uh, oxygen masks. Profit when, when before they go people. Huh? Profit before people. Yeah, so they rather wear the oxygen mask outside in Beijing mm -hmm. and, and be the number one global economic a giant. They rather yeah. have, they rather, in other words, profit before people and the planet. Yes. It's mm -hmm. like a, it's like a, it's like a, it's like an evil, uh, a spellbound obsession. It's like, it's like being under a, under a sa satanic spell where somebody's a multi-billionaire and they don't have enough money. They never have enough. And now Donald Trump appointed all billionaires to his cabinet. All ha billionaires, all big Wall Street guys, they this, that. And, and what do the little people who voted for him expect? That they're going to do something in their favor? Come on! How, how is a multi-billionaire going to have uh, empathy and compassion for the poor and middle class? How? It ain't going to happen. Now I heard that the, the Democrat, Mr. Murphy, running for governor in New Jersey, is a former Wall Street tycoon. So how the hell was a former Wall Street tycoon? We he, had one. We had one in there. Corzine, there John Corzine. Yeah. He was a Goldman Sachs boy. Goldman Sachs. Yes. How were they going to feel your pain, representing the Democratic Party? <laughs> you see where, I, where where I'm going with this? How the Democratic Party has become just as bad as the the people they have been fighting yeah, sure. against for decades. They have become just as bad. Mm -hmm. Incoming White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer said Friday on NBC's Morning Joe... Does he love Indian food? Spicer? Trump is issuing a warning... Of course. ...to other countries. They need to understand that if they expand their nuclear capabilities, this president is not going to sit back. He's going to act. But it's okay for Trump to expand the U.S. nuclear capabilities. Yeah. But they can't expand on theirs. And and, and what is he going to do? What is he going to do uh, against North Korea, per se? Who doesn't give a shit who they destroy, even themselves? He's just, he's just... He's Can I say kamikaze? Yeah. Uh, well, isn't that what a, what a suicide bomber is with extreme Islam? And a suicide ISIS? country. I mean... How do you beat that? Donald Trump is is like Yosemite Sam. He has an itchy trigger finger. Trigger finger. He's just itching to nuke somebody. He should nuke his hairstyle. Well, you don't play around with nukes. No, because once you launch, that they, you might as well consider it a domino effect. They're all going to be launched. There you go. The other side is going to launch. First, uh, first strike, and it's all over. Well, you know, if if you estimate that your missiles will reach a certain part of the world in less time and they have the technology to do the same thing to you so it ends up being practically simultaneous so the first strike theory is not going to hold any water <laughs> yes it will because theirs are going to hit you first then you got to fight with what's left but 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 what as their missiles hit you your missiles are probably Two thirds. Their missiles will be up in the air. Your missiles when we launch ours. Right. But theirs will be going to their targets. But once before ours get but, to their but targets. once, but once the missiles are airborne, both sides. Well, you're not going to do a double a, a one a two a, at the same time. A first strike is a first strike. North yeah. Korea launches their missiles against the United States. They're up in the air. We launch back. Theirs are going to hit us first. Yeah, because they got to they got to jump, they got to head start. Exactly. Now, now Russia is capable of uh, the high speed missiles too. 
you know. So, yeah, but <laughs> the United States has more warheads and missiles than any other country. And, and another problem is on the globe. Another thing is that many missiles can be launched not f not from silos that are stationary, uh, a static Trucks. station. No, nuclear subs. Nuclear subs. Submarines, Polaris's, for God's sake. You don't know where, where they are. They could be. They could be. They could be right. Right off the coast of Cuba, there could be Soviet nuclear subs. In the Caribbean, short distance. Well, how do you, you know, know what I mean? Be, how do you know it could be Russia that got, does the first strike? There are several countries with uh, nuclear weapons. Pakistan, India, uh, North Korea. Hey, I read an article that China's... Uh, China's uh, China. China's answer to uh, to NASA is very advanced. They're very advanced. The article says they have the warp drive technology that was on Star Trek. Well, if I knew what warp drive was, I would, you know. That's cool, man. But I don't know what the hell it is. No, there's another word for it. They don't call it warp drive. It's it's, that's what it's, I'm saying. It's, but it's even a drive if that's it, pretty freaking fast. Yeah, but how does it operate? What is its mechanism? I have to fully, I have to actually study the See? article. See? That, that's a good question. And I will... A few years ago... I will bring it to your attention. A few years ago, we were talking about fusion as an energy source. Fusion, the energy source that fuels the sun. It goes right. on and on and on and on and on and on right. and on. And then, there's anti and then all of a sudden it disappears. And, and, and you don't hear no it's more about it. It's antimatter anti too. Uh, I, I watched a documentary on antimatter for as a source of energy and mm -hmm. then uh, I don't hear about it anymore. Mm -hmm. I heard about the uh, perfectly preserved frozen woolly mammoth in, uh, in Arctic Siberia that was found and they and they had the DNA, the everything, the blood, the muscle, everything was intact. They were going to put the DNA in a in a female elephant. Asian elephant. Yeah, sure. I haven't heard anything about that. That is correct. They found a, a good DNA in Montana of a Tyrannosaurus Rex. They yeah. found they 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 got the DNA. They were going to do it with the chicken, which is like the closest relative to the dinosaur. I didn't hear uh, the di the dino chicken or the uh, whatever. I didn't hear anything about that after that. So things are kept secret from us, my my friend. Things are or kept they're just bullshit in the first place. Well, if you have good talking DNA, about fake news, if you have good DNA, and and you have a close relative to the species, you can do this. Yeah, I know, but they ain't doing it. It doesn't go any further, so it might just be fake news. You you trust the the uh, the media that you see on TV too much. No, you trust but verify. You and Bear Bill Bear, Morrow, you don't seem to want to do the homework. You gotta do your homework. Now what's the homework? Going to Snopes? Going to Snopes? Going to any other fact checker? He likes Snopes. I've never used Snopes in my life. You know about Snopes, you know. I know about it, but I've never used it at all. So why do you say that? You don't want to see the T-Rex or the woolly mammoth come back. That's what it is. It, you're, it I'm talking it, about fake news. It curdles your blood to, to think fake that these news. things exist. Fake news. It doesn't matter what it oh, is. Oh, yeah. And you know what? When Hillary Clinton talks about fake news, that's just... Uh, um. That that that's just you know that's just that, that's a distraction opinion. to get you away from reading about things about concerning her, and Donald Trump says fake news to get keep you from reading things about him. Yeah, it could be depending on the fake news. So but if there's fake news, you have to have a way of verifying whether it's true some, or not true. Some fake news. See, the thing about, the, the clever thing about the people who perpetuate fake news is that ah. lots of news everywhere, not just online, mm. is fake. It really is fake. Yes, it is. And I don't mean, I don't mean preposterous or ridiculous like, like the onion. I mean, you know, that's like set. That's a satiric 
uh, website. But I, I'm saying I'm saying real fake news that's sneaky. You know, like propaganda. Yeah, that's what it is. You know, like uh, I read, uh, I, I found the banner where Adolf Hitler himself called his media uh, fake journalism. There you go. Because they were probably because they didn't but didn't print what he wanted. Because they were printing what they what they wanted, right? Yeah. The now, victory, right, of Donald Trump. Yeah. Does not. Does that mean we there will be a new group of pigs at the trough? <laughs> Look at his proposed cabinet. Older white billionaires. Are they really going to drain the swamp? That's the oligarch for you. Older white uh, billionaires. Can I sell you a bridge? Old. Old geezers, yes. A Tea Party to budget director? I pity the poor, as life will only get more difficult as budgets are slashed. You hear that, uh, redneck evangelicals that don't, don't have a pot to piss in? Down, way down south, out, yon out yonder? And out west, that they keep on voting for Republicans, you're gonna suffer more. The real question is whether there is any sanity left in the Republican Party. Will it stand up for what is right and decent and unite with Democrats to prevent the coming onslaught of misguided policies? <laughs> or will it buckle to the autocrat? Sadly, America must put its hopes in Republicans. We live in strange, dangerous times. Oh, that is true. That is very true. Excellent article. You know, what's the what's the name of the gentleman who wrote that? It was a letter. Oh. Mark. Mark. That's it. Shoe. Marks. No, I didn't, didn't, didn't. I got to read it. It's it's upside down. All right, never mind. Don't don't worry about it. Mark Schoenfield. Mark Sho Mark Schoenfield. Good, great job, Mark Schoenfield. <laughs> even though you probably won't see the show. <laughs> the column by Linda Chavez should be included in every civics and government text used in our schools. Oh. As someone who has served both as a president of a state board and as a mayor, I can vouch for the veracity of every word in that column. I have spent the better part of a lifetime futilely trying to explain why government cannot be run like a business. Yeah, look at all the conflicts of interest Donald Trump has. Oh my, it's going to be very complicated for him. And Chavez makes it crystal clear. Added to the intractable bureaucracy so well described is the problem of direct governance. Whereas a CEO has final say in decision making, mm -hmm. The head of a government entity, be it president of our country or a mayor of a small municipality, must gain the approval of the relevant legislative body, which often changes the original intent beyond recognition. Whereas a business organization chart is shaped like a triangle, a government entity is more like a rectangle. And whereas a corporation is responsible to a finite group of stockholders with a common interest, profit, a government entity must satisfy a constituency with many different goals and interests. Public servants, as the bureaucracy titles itself, have a motto Elected officials come and go, but we survive them all. Mm. 
doesn't look good and people have themselves to blame that's all I have to say no, yeah. nobody wants to really educate their mind many many Americans are lazy they just rather just sit sit their fat ass in front of the TV and watch mainstream media <coughs> you know and they don't they capitulate I mean they, or atro uh, not atrophy uh, no, um, 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 they just don't care. Uh, um, They're lazy. They don't want to do their homework. Apathy. 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 Yes. It, it, there is that old motto that people use all the time. I haven't read a book since I was in school. Oh, that shows. I don't read. Oh, that shows. I don't. Uh, 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 I don't. Uh, 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 I get my news from Fox News. Oh my God! Yo, know, those people. Oh, they are definitely imbeciles. Um, um, now there's so many educational documentaries on YouTube that you, you literally do not have to read nearly as much as people did in the old days. I mean, there are long educational documentaries on YouTube. Yeah. And I mean, how many in them good are, deck of How many in them are by people like a Gary No? You know, there's. Well, you know what you're going, what what you're getting, is as close to the truth as we can get. Well, you at know, this there time. there is such a massive amount. I don't know how YouTube's uh, Google YouTube servers handle it. There is such a massive amount of videos that are um, uploaded into YouTube and Google that it's like you could find practically anything, anything you want. Yeah. And 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 you However. can get you can get a several dozen opinions on the same subject. And one and well, one, that's the best way to verify, and, isn't it? And one guru is better than the other. Yeah. You know, just take your pick. Yeah. <clears throat> that's how you gotta find out the truth sometimes. Yeah, like let's say uh, you you want to build something. Let's say you want to do a little Bob Vila, you know. Hey, so hey. Let's say you want to build something. Ask this old house. Like for instance, there's a video out on how to build a Festivus pole. Oh, jeez. I wish I would have kept my aluminum pole from the 70s. All you have to do is buy, buy a, uh, no, it's a you know, the dancing pole for your, for the woman, and just put it up. No, it says it shows you. Yeah, it shows pole. you about how how to glue the wood so it's in an X, the form of an X, and how to make the hole and all that shit. But I'm sure there are many other instructional videos on that subject, or it could be. Uh, a solar a solar barbecue which the first time I ever saw it was in the um, Edmund scientific company it was a it was a rectangular magnifying glass called a Fresnel lens yeah. but you had to build it uh -huh. you know I'm not handy that way but you can There's get one that you can buy oh you can you can get so yeah, many take it into the woods with you yeah, I mean, you could get so many instructional videos on how to make anything. I mean, it's incredible, really. I mean, at one time, yes, you had to rely only on books. You had no choice. Or the blacksmith down the street. Or there was a car. There was there were carpenters in in the you know, in the village yeah. in a, in the community. There was the, you know, in a, old America had only Main Street. And you had everybody on the main drag within. Well, I mean, a lot, a lot of uh, people didn't have. Uh, people did not live in congested boroughs, uh, congested yeah. towns. They, everything was based on the county. Yeah. So you, you might have, you might be in a village, and you own your own family farm. But then you got the village. There was distance between. Yes. You had to travel. To get things that you don't make yourself you don't grow yourself I guess New Jersey governor Chris Christie believes that he has done such an extraordinary job that a book about it is justified 
Didn't a judge recently pardon him from uh, Bridgegate? Didn't pardon him. He's not going to. He's the judge don't want him involved. Oh, there's geez. this guy that's trying to make the make it stick, but he's getting no help at you know all of his uh, tries. Okay. In his memoir. I do hope he will include a chapter on how to commit public fraud using a bridge or perhaps a tunnel and another on how to alienate and punish the press, a la Richard Nixon. Mm -hmm. And just like Tricky Dick, he may benefit from his misdeeds. Can you dig that, brother? Editorial page editor Alfred P. Doblin certainly is correct in his criticism of Governor Chris Christie and the Democratic leadership of New Jersey. However, he omits two other groups deserving of criticism. Republicans in the legislature have backed Christie almost without fail. They have been a study in cowardice for the past seven years. The other group deserving a harsh criticism is the New Jersey media, including Doblin. Christie was praised for his tough guy persona. He put critics at his down all rallies in their place, especially when it was a lone individual. You were either on the bus or run over by the bus. <laughs> this was great fun to watch. The snarling bully surrounded by sycophants. Sycophants, yeah. Especially when the target was teachers and their supposed outrageous benefits and cushy jobs. Doblin also praised Christie for ending the Ark Tunnel Project. Christie showed the petty, vindictive man he really was. When the Democrats stood up to Christie's outrageous attempt to pack the state Supreme Court, Doblin criticized them. The vast majority of the state's media gave fawning praise to Christie and played a large role in creating the monster who has become one of the worst governors New Jersey has ever had. No matter how you, you shake it, I mean, if you vote for the, for the two-party system, you're voting for the establishment. Either, either side. That's it. I mean, I don't feel comfortable voting for a Democrat that was a uh, Wall Street big shot. Really. They don't have, they will not have my best interest. Of course not, but how long does it take people to understand that? Now, now if, uh, let's say, the, um, there is a Green Party in New Jersey. Actually, the Green Party has established many branches in different states. If the Green Party of New Jersey applies themselves enough, uh, they could get more New Jerseyans to know they exist. And uh, through the Green Party of New Jersey, they, they can get to know uh, the Jill Stein campaign, uh, with Jill Stein videos, and so on and so forth, where she has services there, gives speeches. I mean, I don't know what's up with Bernie Sanders. He's, well, he's got the organization called Our Revolution. Um, what he's going to do with it, being that he left the Democratic Party, I don't know. I don't know what his plans are. I, I know they mean well. 
they mean well in what they're doing, but people need a third progressive party. They 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 don't they they need a or no parties. They at need all. A, well, you gotta you gotta you gotta vote for someone, and but it shouldn't be a Democrat or a Republican. Why, why can't you vote for a person? Oh, I'm fine with that. A party. Oh, I'm fine with that. If my person's name is 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 it That's is on right. the ballot, I'll vote. I'll That's vote right. for him or her. Parties came into being to make people um, fellowship, like to make no, you feel like you no. belong to something. Power. Oh. Power. Well, people like organizations. They like yeah. to feel like they belong to something. They like tangible things, tangible. Like, you know, pretend this was solid bar of sterling silver. Ooh. It's tangible, it's in my hand. People like that. Well, they don't like individuals. That's why they made, they made shrines with statues. That's things. why they kill people like Jesus, and then they worship them thereafter. You see? Well, didn't, didn't the uh, Israelites turn their back on, on God and Moses after when he went up to get the Ten Commandments? Absolutely. And, and, and then other times, Sodom and Gomorrah, that was in Israel, right? Sodom and Gomorrah was in, uh, was in, in Jordan. The, in, the, in, in, in the land of... Uh, uh, it was somewhere over there. That well, it was it was there over there. Yeah, I mean, you know, but there was rebellion well, that's, many times. Yes, but uh, there's always, there's always a rebellion, fear, or whatever you want to do against the individual. And they got. What do you think happened to all the, uh, all the, um, the, the, uh, the prophets? Yeah. That God sent. Now there were no books at the time. He right. sent prophets. Word of mouth prophets. To yeah. Israel to tell them what they're doing wrong, what you got to change. And they got the smited doctor. over and over. Exactly. And, over. and what happened to 11 of the apostles? Martyred. They were martyred. Except for John, John of Pat on Patmos. Yeah. Patmos. So they wrote the book of Revelation, but yeah, they were, they all got killed. That's right. That's right. You know, and the old, and the, and the, and the, the the evil, greedy, multi-billionaire, trillionaires of make up the one top one percent of the world. They live to a ripe old age. They just keep on living. They don't croak. They well, don't. eventually they do. But. Well, ev eventually, yeah. But they can afford to get all those heart transplants. But they make a lot of trouble in the meantime. Oh yeah. I mean, okay. look, let's take the war mongering. Uh, War profiteering uh, companies that uh, make them uh, make money off of the lives of the little guy, uh, the, the the men, the women, the sons and daughters of, of the little schmuck. Or how about the war criminal, the poor Kissinger, who thinks of the army as just pawns you gotta to be talk moved about. back and forth. I'm right here. Yeah, you're the you, one who has. You to. got this friggin' monstrosity making all that right my voice gets there before that oh, okay. you know well but the point is I forgot what I'm saying you lost your train of thought choo choo that's a soul train alright well, alright we're talking about the too late to start this here. yeah okay now we're gonna break for lunch now you will hear promo uh, feel free to hit the pause button, read and learn. And we'll see you. We'll see you in a few. We'll see you in a few. Time to have time to take part in a little gastronomy. It smells good.
is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Podcasts, Holistic Health Talk, and Progressive Discussions. I want to talk about the very foundation of our entire organization, the newsletter that was founded by my co-host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman in 1977. And that newsletter is called Censored. Newsletter Censored is truth and news fighting censorship and conservative propaganda. We believe we are living in the end times and you need Newsletter Censored. Newsletter Censored pr provides the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? Newsletter Censored is for the independent, critical, free thinker with an open mind. Besides the reading of Censored, Newsletter Censored also has The God Project and How to Defeat a Conservative. There is nothing in the mainstream media or the press like Newsletter Censored. So simply go to www.newslettercensored.com and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription to the newsletter that started it all in 1977, Newsletter Censored. You need Newsletter Censored. That's www.newslettercensored.com. Greetings. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Podcasts, Holistic Health Talk, and Progressive Discussions. I want to talk about the very foundation of our entire organization, the newsletter that was founded by my co host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman, in 1977. And that newsletter is called Censored. Newsletter Censored is truth and news fighting censorship and conservative propaganda. We believe we are living in the end times and you need Newsletter Censored. Newsletter Censored pr provides the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? Newsletter Censored is for the independent, critical, free thinker with an open mind. Besides the reading of Censored, Newsletter Censored also has The God Project and How to Defeat a Conservative. There is nothing in the mainstream media or the press like Newsletter Censored. So simply go to www.newslettercensored.com and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription to the newsletter that started it all in 1977, Newsletter Censored. You need Newsletter Censored. That's www.newslettercensored.com. Okay, we're back. This is Progressive Discussions Holiday Special Show. Okay, Merry Winter Solstice Yule, <clears throat> Hail Krampus, and Happy Festivus for the rest of us. We begin with the uh, balance of this holiday show. Let's all right, continue. Change of pace here. Tomato paste. My mother-in-law has recently started a Facebook account. Oh God, mother-in-law, was she spying on people? There are three of us, sisters-in-law, and we all find this a great way for her to keep up with the grandkids. However, 
she shares every single photo we post. Oh gosh. An aunt is widowed and has been speaking to men over Facebook and one of these men shared a photo of my daughter to his Facebook friends. Oh boy. This was alarming. Why her daughter's hot looking? I immediately asked this person whom I've never met to take the photo down. After a day I was still so shaken and then I deleted my account. You're not going to take it down just because she says so. My mother-in-law was heartbroken. Facebook photo sharing is tricky with relatives. There's no specific setting to not allow people to share photos. You can only restrict an audience. Yeah. I don't want to restrict family members from photos. I just don't want them shared until Facebook develops this feature. How do I respectfully explain to my mother-in-law I don't want her sharing so many pictures because others in her circle seem to think that by her sharing they are welcome to do as well. Yeah, she, what she's talking about is like what they do on the internet with let's say a copyrighted image and you try if you try to download it uh, a little message box would come up saying this this image is copyrighted by the artist who made it you know and uh, it kind of like blocks you from uh, from downloading on it but I mean once you're on the internet and you have photos you're fair game if your daughter's hot looking she's gonna get people are gonna you know it's going to travel. It's going to travel. And if your daughter has a Facebook account, they're going to find her and they're all, all the guys are going to like uh, send her messages. You know? Outside of an honest conversation with my mother-in-law, is it appropriate to make a disclaimer in the description of the photo <laughs> or status to ask for my permission before sharing? <laughs> Ah, oh, yeah, like, this woman thinks because she snaps her fingers, people are going to comply. Dear Mom, they want to bang your daughter. Face it. Until Facebook gives people a way to lack, excuse me, lock down their own photos, you can try to at least control who sees them by customizing your settings. Restricting who sees your photos to only friends or a family group. This means that even if your mother-in-law or aunt shares a photo, it won't actually be seen by anyone outside your designated circle. You should also use the Facebook tools for tagging, so you will be notified whenever your child is tagged. Yeah, she didn't want to tag her. However, <laughs> it is important to remember that anyone can take a screenshot of a photo and share it freely. Explain to your mother-in-law why social media sharing is not like running into a friend and showing them a cute picture of the grandkids. Understand that this is a typical rookie mistake. It is basic Facebook etiquette to always ask permission to share someone else's material. If you decide to hop back on Facebook, whenever you post a photo you don't want shared, definitely post a request along with the photo. Please don't share this or any other photo without permission. I got a funny story to tell you right after you finish this. That's it. Um, one of my one of the guys uh, was a member of a couple groups, and on my friends list, uh, friends list, uh, Steve Carlatini, he cracked me up. He tells me, he says I'm upset because 
my girlfriend won't comply with my uh, uh, request of having sex with both her and her daughter. Yeah. Menage a trois with the, his girlfriend and his and her daughter at the same time. So his girlfriend got upset and said uh, and, and refused. And he says her daughter her daughter's hot, and he wants to bang the both of them. He says he actually wants to bang her daughter, but mm -hmm. but uh, I you know if I don't. I figure if I didn't invite her, she would be uh, yeah, highly, get the daughter. Uh, highly angry, uh, you know, upset, and um, um, uh, by not be by him not inviting her. So, but he just expected her to mm -hmm. comply. Say, sure. Why not? What the hell? That's pretty wild and kinky, right? Doing mother and daughter at the same time. If if the daughter is hot. <coughs> I don't like um, I don't like audiences when it comes to that. I don't know. It, it, some people like that voyeurism. Yeah. yeah. You know. Um, um, performing. Yeah, performing with an audience. I I don't like. That. I never cared for that. You know. Anyway, I found that to be rather whimsical. <laughs> Not a popsicle, whimsicle. Uh, back to Governor Christie of New Jersey. Poor, poor little, little chubsy ubsy. He has been squeezing the juice from the proverbial orange for seven years. Hey, if he sat on the orange, it, it, w it would be totally like juice in a nanosecond. He has been unapologetic about, about getting every perk, every trip, and every moment in the sun he can while New Jersey's governor. On uh, Monday, legislators said no more. At stake were three proposals pushed at breakneck speed through the Assembly and the State Senate committees. Christie and the legislative leaders from both sides of the aisle had made a backroom deal to let the governor profit from a book deal, give raises to legislative staffers, judges, and some other state employees. The last move would result in the probable loss of 200 to 300 jobs had newspapers across the state. None of these proposals was good public policy. This was political sausage making. And legislators figured that out after there was a loud cry from the public. The only thing worse than being served a bad sausage is discovering that you are actually filling the inside casing Yeah, so, such as the case with Democrats and even some Republicans. Yeah, what's this, what's this point? I don't know what they put in the casing. I thought that was going to be said, but it didn't. There is no appetite in New Jersey for giving Christie, with an approval rating of 18%, anything, let alone the opportunity to make more money off his job. The governor is not bound by the same ethics rules as other public officials, so he has been able to squeeze the orange for trips to Jordan and to football games. He and his wife filed a joint tax return for 2015 showing nearly $1 million in income. You can buy a lot of Tropicana with $1 million. But the book deal wasn't enough of a trade, and which let with legislators for boosting some salaries. Well, this never enough is never enough for a Republican. Christie wanted to exact revenge on the state's newspapers. Ah, he's like Trump. He he doesn't like what they write. No. Oh. His claim 
that pulling public notices from newspapers would save taxpayers $80 million is under-substantiated, unsubstantiated. He won't produce his numbers. Over the weekend, in an opinion piece he ran on a social media site, he claimed the state newspapers refused to publish the piece. That was not true. No request was made to the record. Legislators could see something was wrong with all these bills. The speed by which they were being pushed and the zeal with the governor's office were both signals that this was solely about politics. In their last legislative session, Monday, before the holiday break, legislators could not pass these measures. The book deal is dead. The salary increases may see the light of day in another variation. Or legislators may wait until there is a new governor. But Jeremy Rosen, a spokesman in Christie's office, made clear the governor isn't with the state's newspapers. Isn't through with the the, the, the uh, newspapers. If the assembly wants more time to consider the legal notices bill that is acceptable to the governor, Rosen said in a statement Monday evening. However, this will be a top priority when we return from the holidays. New Jersey has 10 credit downgrades under Christie. The public pension system is grossly underfunded. The gas tax has been hiked. But there is still not nearly enough money to help pay for a new rail tunnel or other infrastructure. Yeah, because the rich are not getting taxed. And pulling legal notices from newspapers is Christie's top priority. That says a lot. It speaks volumes about Christie. Legislators who intend on serving the people of New Jersey should see this for what it is, a punitive act by an unpopular governor. The orange is dry. New Jersey will no longer be squeezed. Well, guess what? You re-elected them, you idiots. You re-elected him. You complained about him during his first term, and you went and re-elected him. I do not feel sorry for the people of New Jersey. Same thing with Wisconsin. You re-elected Scott Walker. <sighs> you re-elected Paul Ryan. Uh -huh. I don't feel sorry for the people of Wisconsin either. That's it. Plain and simple. Same thing with Florida. And, and uh, the walking uh, dildo head, uh, Rick Scott. You know? What if your doctor's gender could influence your chance of surviving a visit to the hospital? Huh? A study of older patients hospitalized for common illnesses raises that provocative possibility. Patients who got most of their care from women doctors right. were more likely to leave the hospital alive than those treated by men. Well, women by nature have more compassion, empathy. I mean, not all, but you know, in general. Uh, uh, um, compassion, empathy, towards other people, a uh, nurturing personality compared to men, um, you know, in terms of uh, bedside manner. And treatment, obviously. Well, they the all have... that they give. Yeah, well, if they're a board-certified specialist, it shouldn't matter what gender they are. No. That, well, or race. But the point is that it has been known for years that uh, women do not get the same concern from a male physician as for as per treatment as the men do. 
Well, men. In the women's, like, let us say, women with a heart condition, is treated less important than the male. Oh, yeah, it's like a woman going to an auto mechanic. The mechanic is, uh, he's rubbing his hands together when he sees the woman <laughs> uh, putt, putt, putting into his uh, driveway. You know, oh, yeah, it's, it's like going to be like taking candy from a baby. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that is true. That is true. And uh, um, just like tall people usually get more respect overall than short people. Even though you're an asshole and you're tall, you know, you're going to get farther in life. Remember a couple of weeks ago, we were discussing the Copacabana and the guy that wears the fringes and you were thinking it was... Uh, I mentioned uh, Jim Carrey in the no, mask, no, no, and I mentioned uh, no, Desi no, no. Arnaz. The frilly yeah, shirt. Yeah, the, the, the entertainment, sh uh, the puffy shirt. Yeah, and with you the, were with the frills. Was, you were thinking it was, it was Barry Manilow. No, he just sang a song called Copacabana. Yeah. Well, it was actually Peter Allen that I was thinking of. But that is a traditional Cuban... Yeah shirt that they entertain as wear, musicians yeah. and what have you. And that's what I think it's did. a linen, it's a white linen shirt with with ruffles. Ruffle, ruffly. Yeah. About eleven percent of patients treated mostly by women died within thirty days of entering the hospital. Versus eleven point five percent of those treated by men. The research team estimated there would be about 32,000 fewer deaths each year in the United States if male physicians performed at the same level as females. The study did not probe why these differences in survival exist. And Dr. Ashish Yah, J-H-A, the lead author said the study doesn't mean patients should avoid him or all other male physicians. Hmm. But he said male doctors could take a cue from women doctors. Tendencies that might contribute to better care. According to other research, women doctors are more likely than men to follow treatment guidelines provide preventive care more often, and communicate more with patients. Well, uh, I also see more compassion in foreign doctors than American doctors. Ah. Bedside manner, attitude, general attitude, Willing to answer questions and not cut you off? Well, yeah. I have a personal story on that. I, uh, I was at my doctor's once. And I was waiting in the cubicle, you know, for him to come around and... Oh, the second waiting room. Yeah, check me out. Yeah. And it, it happened to be close to, I guess, his desk room or whatever he was. And he was on the phone with his broker. Discussing his uh, situation and taxes and money, etc. Well, I'm sitting there waiting for him. Like your time is not valuable. So American doctors are, you know, basically more pointed towards the goal of making moolah. Well, they overbook Rather their than, appointments. You know, their waiting rooms are yeah, packed. Yes. Because they over over book patients for appointments. Right. Yeah, they're like. Uh, like a like like a, the medical version of a sleazy shyster lawyer. Yeah. Yeah. That's how they are. <clears throat> Donald Trump's book, The Art of the Deal, should have been titled The Art of the Dupe. Yeah. Our soon-to-be president has an uncanny talent 
for deluding the unwary. <laughs> unwary. The imbeciles. Not yet in office. He is already building the Trump dynasty. Two sons, a daughter, a son-in-law, are helping to lay the cornerstone of that establishment. Do you imagine how many conflicts of interest there will be if he wants to maintain the Trump dynasty and be president of the United States? He's in, he's in for a rude awakening. They intend high-level meetings, intelligent briefings, and they close on profitable business dealings. They will be well experienced, fully primed to step into the Oval Office in 2017. President Dwight D. Eisenhower. That cabinet he picked up. Before leaving office spoke of the military industrial complex. Oh yeah. And exhorted the nation to guard against the combination as a danger to our liberties and democratic processes. Sure, combination of church and state too. Now all that was warned, pre-warned. Pre he warned uh, the nation to take nothing for granted and avoid becoming a community of fear and hate. The proposed cabinet of Donald Trump consists of generals and super rich CEOs. Uh, we will be ruled by demagogues in 2017. So the uh, fox is now guarding the hen house. Well, he might not, as well say it. He's not guarding it so much as eating the chickens. <laughs> well, if the, if the fox guards the hen house, then the fox has first dibs to enter the hen house. That's it. He's got the dibs, baby. You know, I mean, it, it really is... He, he's not shy about hiding anything. He, it's very obvious that the corporate fascist oligarch has control. I what? mean, and he's, he's shoving everybody's nose in it. What did he say? He could shoot somebody in, uh, in the middle of New York City. Yeah, and still, you know, they love him. That's how it looks. Hey, man. Satan comes as an angel of light. Huh. And uh, to deceive the world, and uh, it seems like for every intelligent progressive you know or hear of, it's probably a whole Passel. cargo ship full of, 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 of morons that are completely spellbound by their cult religion and by their insane po political views. That, you know, I know person, I know so, uh, uh, two people personally that think very highly of Fox News as a source for their news. Two of them. And they're, and they're both, in general, intelligent people. Now, if an intelligent person that went to college thinks that Fox News is the is the only the only one of the very few stations you should keep on TV. Something strange is going on. Something strange is in the water. You know? Yeah. Fair and balanced. Yeah, sure. I divorced last year. Change of paste. Tomato paste. After 14 years of marriage, we have a 10 year old son together. While staying with his father on weekends, he has overheard his father and new girlfriend having sex. Uh huh. It has happened so, a couple of times. Why should the father change his lifestyle for some fucking kid? And each time, my son comes home in tears. Too fucking bad. You 
trying to cock block your own father from getting laid? His father has promised not to let it happen. Oh, again. he's a pussy. Here we go again with this, this modern way of parenting. My son is worried that I am doing the same thing. Squeaky, 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 squeaky. Hear the mattress going? And he is treating me like a child. And he is the parent. You know, I'd love to see a jealous little prick cock block in his, or his mother's boyfriend. The boyfriend turns around and says, Yeah, I'm going to bang your mother tonight. So shut up. And get lost. The little monster. He seems to think that people have sex only to have babies. And he is worried. You've been listening to uh, Republicans and the Catholic Church too much, right? Do I need to get him some kind of counseling? Squeaky, squeaky. Or will this get better as he gets older and matures? I am angry that his father didn't use his head before using his actions. Now I'm the one being punished for it. Well, the kid shouldn't be nosy. Was his father in, in a room with a door shut? Well, then the kid was nosy. Curiosity killed the cat. Satisfaction brought him back? If your son hasn't had the talk with you or his father, the birds and the bees, it should start immediately. So he knows that having sex doesn't always mean the result will be baby. Hey kid, let me tell you something. You got there's something called a schlong. And, and, the, and the peg fits in a hole. For every peg there's a hole, for every hole there's a peg. And it goes inside and you go in and out. And unfortunately the mattress goes squeaky, 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 squeaky. And while you're at it, Tell your son that you are not planning to have any more children anytime soon. So he has no reason <coughs> to worry about you, excuse me. A jealous little prick. She, he wants to be the number one baby in the house. No sharing mommy's affection. Not even with a boyfriend. Oh yeah, and if you hear mommy screaming and wailing, she's not in trouble. <laughs> she's not being hurt. Oh, uh, you know what? You got to show your kids you're the alpha, just like a pet. You're the alpha. Yeah. Anyway, is that that time to say bye bye? I don't know. What do you want? What time is it? I got a one here. It looks a lot, pretty long one. Hold on. It's five or four. You, all right. One more. Do not let the scammers snow you into buying an iTunes gift card. An iTone gift card. Oh, this is a very applicable reading for this time of year. Or any gift cards. Or any gift card. Hey, speak of the devil. What was that? Wasn't I mentioning that early? That's why I said I well, was. Yeah, yeah. Even though it's a biggie. Go ahead. When we popped into a CVS pharmacy one evening to buy holiday stuff before a snowstorm, I was taken aback. Taken aback. When I heard something far different from Darlene Love singing Marshmallow World. Who the fuck is Darlene Love? She's I know. I, girl I, groups. Oh no! The 60s, oh how no! I, 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 hey, I watched like Dean. The Ronettes, I watched Dean Martin with Frank Sinatra singing "Marshmallow World," and they did a great job. I want a hippopotamus for Christmas. No, no, no! Oh, I, hippopotamus will be. No, that's stupid. I don't like <laughs> nauseating songs. I like uh, "Marshmallow World" was nice when the right people sing it. The in-store radio was broadcasting a rather lengthy warning oh, about how you shouldn't buy iTunes gift cards after you get a call, supposedly from the Internal Revenue Service, demanding lots of cash. It's a scam. Oh, this this will be a good uh, Chisler's Hall of Shame inductee. 
the unsaid underlying message, don't let scammers snow you. Snow you. As we enter the gift card season, it's interesting to it's interesting to spot the extra efforts to warn consumers about the perils of buying gift cards for scam artists. No, we're not talking about the dangers of putting five or ten dollars on a McDonald's gift card for the crafty kid next door. We're talking about the hardcore. Steal every dollar you can and make somebody feel really dumb. Scammers. One of the hot new scams of 2016. Getting victims to put cash on iTunes. Get being addressed in fragrance aisles and at the cash register in some stores. Gift cards and prepaid card scams are a challenge to all retailers. As a result, CVS is incorporating a new point of scale warning when it comes to gift cards. If you buy a gift card at a CVS register. You'll see the following message on the screen at the checkout. Protect yourself from prepaid card scams. Common scams include requests related to lotteries, taxes, a new job, and helping someone in need. The warning goes on to tell consumers never to provide any prepaid card information, including a PIN number or a card number, to anyone they don't know. If you feel you are a victim of fraud, reconsider your purchase and contact local law enforcement. A consumer can even hit cancel on the screen when it comes to buying that prepaid card if they think they're about to hand over money to a con artist. Such warnings come not a minute too soon, especially as we'll jump into the tax season. I wrote a story in late September about a young college student who put $1,762 on an iTunes cards to pay what a con artist convinced her that she owed in back taxes. She didn't know anything. Sophisticated fraudsters who are getting sizable resistance lately from authorities will no doubt soon resume attempting to file fraudulent tax returns to generate generous tax refunds for themselves. Well, they got it down to a, to a science, these scammers, oh, huh? Oh, yeah. The Treasury Inspector General for Tax Administration issued a new poster fly and flyer last week to warn taxpayers about the fraudulent calls from people impersonating the IRS and Treasury Department officials. The poster is designed to be printed out and used wherever gift cards are sold. But it can be helpful as senior senders or other locations to warn people about this crazy gift card scam. The Inspector General is working with private and public partners to fight the scam. Unfortunately, we cannot get the word out enough about why you don't want to put any money on an iTunes gift card to pay tax bills or deal with other demands. Despite the excellent progress we have made in our investigation of this matter, the callers are aggressive and relentless. Once they have your attention, they will say anything to con you out of your hard-earned cash. Widely publicized law enforcement actions took place in October in the U.S. and in India and reportedly have cut into much of the tax-related scam activity. 
After a three-year joint investigation, the U.S. Department of Justice obtained an indictment in October involving dozens of alleged fraudsters based on the U.S. in the U.S. Excuse me, and five call centers in India, all accused of tricking people into paying fake tax bills, hmm. either by wire or placing money on prepaid cards. At one point, authorities were hearing of 150 new scam victims a week. Unbelievable. But for the week that ended in December the 5th, 5th, only 11 consumers reported falling victim to the scam. Still, federal watchdogs are concerned that scammers will attempt to restart their engines at any time, or copycats will get into the game as soon as the filing season begins on January 23rd. The iTunes part of the scam began heating up in the spring. TIGTA put out warnings in April and June that scammers were demanding payment on the Apple iTunes gift cards as well as other gift cards. Con artists, including those involved with other scams, often request payments on green dot prepaid cards, money pack pre-made prepaid cards, reloaded prepaid debit cards, and prepaid credit cards. Wow, so remember that people. Avoid this Apple iTunes gift card scam scam avoid it yeah okay that's it thank you for joining us for our ho our holiday special here at progressive discussions have a safe and pleasant and happy holiday uh eat good food uh drink uh, and have good company good quality grog and uh hopefully have good company you know which will vary depending on the kind of relatives you have and the kind of friends you have and you know yeah but don't eat while you're upset no you can pick and choose your 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 friends but not your relatives right <laughs> you're pretty that's much, what they say you're pretty much stuck with them so uh that's why there's good booze good <laughs> bottle of hooch um so have a happy, and we'll see you for the uh, year-ending show, um, New Year's Eve special show. Bye-bye. Enjoy. Heidi Ho. That's um, that's Mr. Hanky, the Christmas Pooh from uh, South Park. He lives inside of you. He, This has been a Mega Life 21 production.